I'm currently adding bosses to my game. Big bosses. Is that the Grim Reaper? If you haven't watched my intro video, please go check it out. But to summarize, I'm Lee and I'm working on another zombie game. I've been working on the first boss, which took some time to implement because of what I wanted to do with it and what I needed to learn. I wanted to create a giant spider without having to animate it. So how do I do that? Procedural animation. I was inspired by Codier's videos of his procedural animated creatures, but of course I didn't know how to do that. Once I went down the procedural animation rabbit hole, I quickly learned that a big part of procedural animation is inverse kinematics. So what is inverse kinematics? I honestly didn't have a clue and I still struggle with the math behind it. It was difficult to actually find a good tutorial on how to implement inverse kinematics in Unity. But let me see if I can briefly explain what I had learned. So what is kinematics? Kinematics describes the motion of things without thinking about what causes the motion. You can actually set is kinematic on a rigid body in Unity and it will stop applying outside forces to the rigid body. So what is not inverse kinematics? Essentially a child object's position and rotation is influenced by the parent object's position and rotation. This is a default mechanic in Unity. So then what is inverse kinematics? Inverse kinematics uses a target and an elbow vector as the input and then moves or rotates bones to end up at the desired position. Basically, instead of parent to child, it goes inverse child to parent based on the input of the elbow and the target vectors. So where does this procedural animation come in? So I basically move the target object in a complicated way through code, which makes the legs look like they're moving naturally through inverse kinematics. Yeah, it, it's that simple. <laughs> Codeer created a great step-by-step -step video showing you how to implement procedural animation and Ditzel Games has a great video explaining inverse kinematics. I'll leave a link to their videos in the description. Once I figured out and implemented the procedural animation stuff, I got to modeling the legs and body of the spider. And then I put it all together. And it actually turned out better than I had expected. And of course I had to have a little bit of fun with a procedural spider. Yo, you want to see some real speed? So then it was time to move what I had tested into my game project. And of course it went 100% perfect. My goal was to finish the giant spider boss by the end of the week, uh, but that didn't happen. What I got done was damaging and killing the spider boss. My idea was to treat each individual leg of the eight legs, its own enemy with health, and use all of the legs to create the overall health of the spider. I also added a health bar to the spider boss that every boss will have. And then I made each leg remove itself when it took enough damage and basically ragdoll. Walky slash. Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. Finally, I wanted to kill the spider boss once it lost all health or half of its legs. Okay, why did that not work? Are you kidding me? Okay, that should work. What is going- oh my goodness. This doesn't work, I'm gonna- okay. I would have liked to get more done, but I'm happy with the progress so far and how everything has turned out. I plan on working on the AI for the spider next and how it moves and targets the player and attacks the player. It may not seem like a lot, but it took a lot of time. It really wasn't that hard. It, I am exaggerating, but it did take quite a bit of time, but it was fun and it was well worth it. I learned a lot. So that's all I have for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed the more technical devlog. Let me know if you did in the comments. Please subscribe, leave a like. There is definitely more to come. See you next time.